Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it was lovely to watch uh, some of those videos. I really appreciate that you're doing this conference. Um, so that was the introduction about me was, you know, was a lot. And, you know, that can be overwhelming the topic of chemicals and health. Uh, but the truth is that the more you understand what's going on and how chemicals influence your health, the more you can be proactive about um, taking care of your health. So that's what I want to talk with you about. And that's what um, is the, the purpose of my book as well. Um, I also want to talk briefly about just myself and how did I get here? Um, so I worked in in greening products and in environmental, um, in the world of sort of the environment and, and greening our world um, from sort of the, the way that industry operates to the way that we operate. And I did that as an attorney and then as a consultant and as an entrepreneur. So I did this from all different angles. Um, so I had a lot of knowledge about sort of the, the theoretical knowledge about how environmental pollution and exposures influence our health. But um, that was really quite academic until I started experiencing health problems myself. And it was that experience that caused me to write my book and to really dig into um, a level of research that I would ne never have otherwise done. And just to um, tell you a little bit about the type of health issues I had, just so that you start to understand sort of what I'm talking about. Um, so I uh, had everything I sort of over time started developing very small things. You know, I had some sort of mild anemia. I needed to sleep more. I became more sensitive to caffeine and alcohol. Uh, at some point I started having bloating and digestive issues and um, my metabolism seemed to slow down and I gained weight. Then there, were, um, there was a period of time in which I just kind of got the flu and it wouldn't go away and it kept coming back. And it wasn't until three years ago when I developed diabetic-like symptoms and I had inflammation in the joints of my hand and I actually developed active sensitivity to chemicals and to fragrance um, that it really hit me. But <laughs> here I am working in this field of um, toxic chemicals and consumer products and getting eliminating them. And I am actually experiencing um, the symptoms that I know are caused by, by uh, toxic chemical exposure, but it's it just, it really took a while. I mean, it hit me because our world is sort of set up to tell us that, you know, it's our genes, it's our lifestyle, whatever that means. And, you know, now we need to, uh, you know, we're eating too much meat or we're doing this and that. And some of that might be true. And there's, and, and in cases it is true uh, just based on how, chemicals get around and I'll get a little bit into that. But uh, I think there's a bigger picture that we need to understand is that um, environmental pollution is a strong influencer on our health and that we can reduce exposure and we can really improve our wellness, health and wellness that way. And um, that no disease, no matter what it is, whether it's acute or chronic, whether it's very serious or mild, um, no disease lives in isolation. And um, that factor of environmental pollution is becoming an increasingly stronger factor in how we do. Um, and there are definitely things that we can do for ourselves um, to reduce exposures and boost our health. Um, so with that, I would like to, I'm gonna pop open um, a PowerPoint presentation that I prepared so that we have something to look at um, together. Okay. so. My website, sensitivecanary.com or joannamore.com, both are fine. Uh, and I'm gonna talk to you today about four major topics. One is chemicals that you need to know about, uh, things that I would like you to know about so you can understand uh, how to avoid them, where they are and how to avoid them, how they cause chronic illness. I really would like you to understand um, that connection, um, like, Chronic illness doesn't just come from anywhere. There are factors that in, exacerbate that, make that much more likely um, in our bodies. How to detoxify and improve your health. Um, that's a, I have a lot of personal experience on that. And then uh, I just want to top it off briefly with how to get positive change within industry because this is something that all of us in our personal and professional lives can have an influence, even if it's just taking small baby steps and influencing um, our actions and the thoughts and actions of others and, and things like that. 
And off to the side there is uh, what my book looks like if you're interested in that. Okay, so um, toxic chemicals, I'm gonna focus on products because most of the chemicals that are being generated are for some products that we're using, even though um, some of them are just kind of ending up in industrial waste, but just knowing, I want you to focus on the products because that's what you're interacting with in the world and what products you buy is going to influence what industry produces. And there are four big categories in our time, of our time that are really important for, for us to understand together. Uh, so the first one is pesticides. And I know that there's other speakers talking about pesticides. So there's certain things that I wanna talk to you about that might be a little bit different. Um, first, I want you to understand what, what do I mean by pesticides and what do other people mean by pesticides? Because usually people think of that, oh yeah, pesticides on crops, right? But let's talk about all the categories out there. Okay, there are insecticides. These are products, you know, ranging from things you might put on your body because you wanna keep bugs and mosquitoes and ticks away to flea medication. You, know, you might have children who have lice in their hair, you're, you're putting that on their, their body, those are insecticides. Uh, and then there's things you might be putting on your home or someone might have put on a building that you're in, um, such as termite uh, insecticide or something to get rid of cockroaches or you know, anything like that. So just to broaden your perspective of what that means. Fungicides, these are used a lot on, you know, on food, but um, you know, it might be antifungal medications. So I, I really want you to think very broadly about pesticides and products like that that are basically designed to kill critters and other life forms, whether they're on your body, they're in your home, they're on your food, um, they're in the water. Um, herbicides, you know, glyphosate, very common one that's been in the news, but people use those things at home as well. Um, things you might put on your grass, your, something that you, your neighbors might use. Uh, they're also used in forests and forest management. Then there's disinfectants, which have become very popular recently, right, with um, the pandemic. And so, you know, I'm, I'm talking about anything you might put on your hands, um, you might spray a surface, that sort of thing. Um, and then generally these are, these are chemicals that are designed to kill life. So I just want you to soak that in. And I'm, I'm not talking about things such as, I, I'm gonna exclude things such as rubbing alcohol that you might put on your hand or soap that you're using to mechanically wash your hands of germs. Um, I'm talking about, uh, these are synthetic chemicals that were produced by industry. They were um, invented during World War II um, for the purposes of biochemical warfare and then applied to um, non-wartime economy. So let's find a use for these. Why not put them, you know, use them to kill off things we don't want. Um, there are uh, alternatives to these products and for each one there's an alternative. So just open your mind. If you've got something at your home that you're realizing you know what, this is some chemical cocktail, I don't know what it is, that kills off something. Um, get on Google, go uh, ask people, go ask around what the alternatives are. So what I want you to do is um, reduce your exposure and use of these chemicals. Um, and I'll talk a little bit later about how that'll be helpful. <clears throat> There's also a misnomer that these are chemicals that we need. Um, there's a lot of marketing and PR by industry that you know we need these chemicals in order to grow our food. Farmers are dependent on them. Well, <laughs> there's some truth to this, but the truth is not that um, you know farmers are dependent on them because they need them in order to, to produce food. They're dependent on them because of the the economies that the way that the chemical companies sell their products and make farmers dependent on that product. So that has nothing to do with the realities of the options out there in the world and how well they work. It has everything to do with the industry and how it manipulates the market, okay? The next class of chemicals are PFAS or forever chemicals. Um, we're hearing about these a lot as well. They're used to waterproof clothes and shoes and furniture. Um, they're 
flame proof, so they're used for firefighting, you know, all the fires that we're having on the West Coast and such. We're still using PFAS. Uh, we, there's plans to transition out of them, but we're still using PFAS for the foreseeable future. Non-stick pans like Teflon, um, you know, that type of stuff. It's also used in food packaging um, that's been in, you know, in the news. And we are sort of waking up to getting rid of these chemicals, but it's gonna take a very long time. And even once we get rid of them from products, it's gonna take a very long time before they get out of our water supplies, before they get out of our environment, um, because they are very long lived. Um, that's another problem with some of these chemicals that I'm talking to you about is that they're very, very, very long lived in the environment and in our bodies. Okay, so with PFAS, the best advice that I can give you is to um, get a high quality water filter that's going to filter PFAS out of your water. Um, PFAS are known to foam. So if you see um, you know, foam uh, in your waterways or foam, any kind of strange, slightly foaming water in your drinking water, I would say, you know, be proactive, filter your water. Um, might, might not be the best place that you want to swim if you see that type of foam and foam. And that picture right there is foam in Michigan. That's PFAS contamination. Mm -hmm.